prevented a serious accident. Here. No thanks, ma'am. Just seeing you squares everything up. Well, that's a very flattering compliment. Well, I meant it, ma'am. I'm sure you did. I'm Julie Dexter. Well, I'm Jim Lacey. Jim Lacey? I'm going to call you Nevada. Well, a man could have a worse name. You know, this country's going to mount to something one day. I'd like to see it. What's holding you back? Cows. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to Words Way Back, and we are going way back today. Way back behind me are the Alabama Hills. I'm in Lone Pine, California, where 27-year-old Robert Mitchum made his starring debut in a film called Nevada. Yep, that's right. It's the same Robert Mitchum you know as the superstar from the A movies, but he'd already done 20 movies in 12 months, the year before, in 1943, six of those were Hopalong Cassidy movies. We're pleased to be showing Nevada today. It is Mitchum's first starring film, and the reason it is, is Tim Holt signed up to join the Army in the year 1943. So, in 44, Mitchum took over that RKO B series, and he was given the sidekick. Cheeto, that's right, Richard Martin. But because Mitchum was brand new in the movies, they gave him a second sidekick, Gwen Big Boy Williams as Dusty. Like a typical B-Western, this starts with a stagecoach chase. Mitchum saves the lovely Ann Jeffries, but he's accused of murder. And with the trio of Dusty and Cheeto, he gets away and he's on the run. A lot of fast chases, a lot of action, but Mitchum himself, that's what makes this such a thrill to watch. Watching this 27-year-old with kind of an edge already, but he's relaxed and you could see right away that he's gonna be a superstar. It is a traditional B-Western. That means it's fun for all of us. So let's get to it right now. I am in the Alabama Hills, like I said, and so will Bob Mitchum. That's how he's introduced, Bob Mitchum. Let's get to it right now. the border to Chiquita where she are. When last I see Chiquita, big tears in her eye. I tell her little turtle, I don't want for you to cry. My Chiquita, pretty soon I'm gonna see. Nevada, she is to Chito, you call that singing? You don't like my song, Dusty? It's terrible. Oh, Jim, he like it. The cows like it. Well, I don't like it, especially the way you foreigners butcher it. Foreigners, I guess you're pretty wrong. All kinds of people make up this country. My mother, she was Mexican. My father, he was Irish. So they call me Chito Jose Gonzalez Bustamante Rafferty. Pretty good American, no? Hey, take a look. Do you see what I see? This country's getting too many peoples. Where you reckon they're heading, Lacey? There's one way to find out. Where you plotting to, Pilgrim? Send them out. What for? Pick my man's up there. Follow the name of Comstock. Stake that out. Hey! Your eyes look like a couple of poached eggs. You ever seen a Bonanza town, Dusty? Lots of them. 
Oroville, El Dorado, Placerville, Grass Valley, Hangtown. It must be something to see. It's something to keep away from. Men shaking gold right out of the grass roots. Hey, you sure you're all right? If I felt better, why? Cause that's the way gold fever usually starts. Listen, that old pancake Comstock is the longest legged liar out of limbo. Nothing that old glute ever uncovered is worth a jumping bean. Well, maybe Mr. Comstock hit the jackpot this time. Oh. Let's us go, Dusty. Jim Lacey, do you mean to tell me you'd join up with them wild-eyed nitwits? Sure, let's give the Comstock load a whirl. Where they score, they're swimming. I will sing to them. Settle down, you yodeling pipsqueak. If it's such a bonanza, why are them fellas coming back? Hi, Ed. Hi, Lacey. Hi. Dusty. Chico. Hi, Ed. been prospecting, Ed. Yep. And I've had a belly full. Can the gold mice there a failure? Oh, gold's up there all right. The trick is to get it out. Some do, but most of them don't. One minute you think you got something, and the next minute you run into that dirty blue muck and you ain't got nothing. Reckon they take me on at the ranch? Why not, Ed? You're a good cowpoke. Right over and talk turkey to the foreman. Thanks, Lacey. See what I mean? Yeah, I guess you're right, Dusty. Only I sure would like to have gone. Oh, forget it. You can comb more gold dust out of your whiskers than they'll ever take out of the gold hill. Step right up, boys. Buy your footage from the fellow that discovered the load. Cut yourself in on the first Nevada Bonanza. Boy, she's a daisy. Your load's no good, Comstock. Ah, get away. You bother me. All I found is that filthy blue stuff. Why, you ain't no miner. You're a farmer. Go on home with the rest of your home. <laughs> <laughs> Why, look at that gold feller. Who wants 20 feet at $10 a foot? Huh? I'll give you five, Pancake. Why, you low-down cheapskate. What? No sale. Six and a bottle of rye. So! <laughs> oh, how are you, Mr. Berge? Hi, boys. Hey, uh, have you got the location ledger handy? You bet. That's fine. I'm selling 20 feet of my mighty old for Bonanza to the Sandy Bowers here. <laughs> write it in. You know I can't write. <laughs> you know all my locations, too. You ought to you bought enough of them. All right, Pancake. 20 feet. Yeah. The offer. Yeah. Sold to... Sandy Bowers. Sandy Bowers. Thank you, Mark. Is that ledger legal, Mr. Burridge? Legal and valid. As soon as I have the contents registered at the land office in Carson City. When will that be? Oh, I'll be going down the valley in a few days. Well, now that everything is legal, let's have a drink on it. Don't use it, thanks. That's the same. Well, you ought to. The water here is rank poison. And that's only rank. <laughs> Much obliged, Mr. Burry. Thanks, Mr. Burry. Goodbye, boys. Well, hello, Joe. Hi, Hi Joe. Howdy. Another crowd just left the load, Chief. Yes, I know. Poor devil. Well, when are you going to start buying? You can pick up that footage for a song. I'm not ready yet. We'll know for sure tomorrow when Julie Dexter gets back from Carson City. a messy job. Who hitched up these nags? I did. Well, didn't anyone ever tell you the lines were supposed to be on the outside? You think these rings were just a decoration? Doesn't look like I did so well. No, you prevented a serious accident. Here. No thanks, ma'am. Just seeing you squares everything up. Well, that's a very flattering compliment. Well, I meant it, ma'am. I'm sure you did. They don't tell me you're heading up to the Comstock. Why not? Well, that kind of froze me. Ladies up there. Oh, my business is on the load. An important errand took me to Carson City. I'm Julie Dexter. Well, I'm Jim Lacey. Jim Lacey? I'm going to call you Nevada. 
Well, a man could have a worse name. You know, this country's going to mount to something one day. They tell me, is the Comstock much of a place? Oh, not yet, but it will be quite a place. I'd like to see it. What's holding you back? Cows. <laughs> If you ever come to Gold Hill, I'll try to return this favor. Goodbye, Nevada. Goodbye, ma'am. Seven. Seven what? Seven lovely women. Ay, que lindas, que bonitas. Mmm. You know who she is? Julie Dexter. She's the biggest gambler between Frisco and St. Joe. She dealt Farrell at Hangtown and Monty at Placerville. Cleaned up a fortune. Well, she wouldn't be wasting her time on the Comstock if it was a fizzle. Well, you fool with her and she'll lift your coat, hat, and pistol. It's a nice way to lose your money, if you have any, which we have not. Well, you've got a month's pay coming at the ranch and I've got a hunch. Seven's my lucky number. At what? He wouldn't mean dice. Now, all you have to do is to pool your wages with mine. Nope. I need a new pair of boots. I love the women, I love the dice, but also I love my music. I'm saving for a new guitar. But Cheeto, I don't speak no English, senor. All right, if you're satisfied to be $20 cowpokes the rest of your lives, I'm not. I'm riding my hunch. The last time he coaxed us into the Redberry dice game, it was very sad. You lose my chaparejos. You mean your pants. Same thing. I'm taking it all, Lacey. You're faded. Dice be nice to just. He needs those new boots. Hide down! You two are a jinx. <clears throat> We've got more than 3,000 here. You made six naturals. I can make it seven. You've got seven on the brain. Please, amigo, all I want is enough to buy a new guitar. I'll make enough to buy a harp, Chido. Oh, no, senor. To play a harp, one must have wings. I don't want to fly. What's the stall? Barry, I've lost plenty in this place. This time, I'm either going out with the whole works or busted. This is my last roll. You can't quit without giving me a break? All right, but when I lose, I quit. You can have any part or all of it. I'll take the chunk. Shooting 7,000, Lacey. Roll them hard and hit the boards. That's the idea. New dice. Oh, no, those dice are hot. I shoot the old dice or no dice. Seventh roll for 7,000, and I want a seven. We'd settle for 11. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the payoff, boys. Pick it up. How are we going to carry it? In your hat. Hold on. You're stripping all the hot stuff from the game. I need it for the plate. How about taking yellow backs for this? No, sir. Paper money ain't no good. Anything wrong with the Bank of Sacramento? I'll take it. Seventy-one hundred dollar bills. Count them. High tail. Split up. We better split this money up first. Not now. You've got the fastest horse, so you get away with it. Cheeto and me'll play jackrabbit with Barry's men. Where'll we meet? Well, since your supplies has been on seeing the Comstock, head that way. 
After you cross the 40 mile desert, you'll see a big lone pine. Wait for us there. Here they come back. With Barry on the prowl for Lacey, you better take another name when you hit the washing. Look for Nevada. Oh, well, don't worry. Oh, yeah, oh, but your life. Oh, oh, say, uh, Miss Julie, yes. save me a blonde, will you? Why, Pancake, by nightfall, you won't be sober enough to tell a blonde from a Paiute squaw. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, boy. That's all right. Here's a fine girl. Uh -huh. Hello, Joe. Hello, Miss Julie. Is your boss in? To you, he's always in. Hello, Cash. Julie. It's good to see you. You know, it seems like you've been gone for a year instead of just a week. Oh, I'd have been here a day earlier, but I had to wait for the Pony Express at Carson. The rider brought what you were expecting. What is it? Regarding the bluish clay and gravel you sent us for assay, the gold content is only $72 per ton. Read the rest of it. This unusual material has, however, the amazing value of $4,280 in silver. Do you realize what this means, Julie? I'm trying The stuff those men out there are cursing and throwing away is, is worth millions. Then the Comstock isn't a gold bonanza. It's silver. Yes. Oh, I'm going to tell them. Wait. Do you want Gold Hill to become another hang town? Oh, but some of the men are so discouraged they're selling out and leaving. If I'd thought you were going to lose your head, I, I wouldn't have shown you this report. Oh, but they don't realize what they're giving up. Julie, I... I thought I could trust you. When this news breaks, anything can happen. It'd be different if Nevada were a state or... or even an organized territory. But there's no authority here, no courts. No man can be certain that what he buys is his. But you have the location, Ledger. Why not send Bill Brewer down to Carlson City with it and have the claims validated? Julie, for my sake, for your own, wait. I suppose you know best. Only it... When the time comes, and it won't be long, Julie, you'll be the one to tell them. I promise. Will I see you this evening? As if I'd miss your new show. Sure, we got everything now, Hattie? Yes, Father, everything but the money. We have to stop at Julie's place for that. Pop, can I use your gun while you're gone? Oh, Marvy, you'll hurt yourself with that old blunderbuss. Well, I got a guard on mine, don't I? If I was only sure there's anything left in that hole to guard. Look who's coming. Good morning. Well, I see we're just in time. The wrong time. Marvy. The fact is, Mr. Burridge, we were just leaving. I won't take a minute. Ben, I, uh, I've come to make you another offer on your place. As you know, it's adjacent to a ledge that my company bought, and 
Well, we think it might be suitable for a quartz mill. These 360 acres are in the very heart of the load. We had hard time proving up on our homestead rights, but they're ours. We're not selling. You see, we figure we can always go back to ranching if the load runs out. But we aim to find out about that. Find out about what, Marvie? Well, we're, uh, we're sinking a shaft. We're going down to Carson City now and order the machinery. I'm afraid you'll find that you only put back into the ground what you've taken out. That's what I tell her. Well, what's this? That darn blue stuff. Pop and Hattie are having it assayed by the government while they're down in Carson. Oh, but I, uh, I've already had an assay made. Look here. The gold content is only $72 a ton. It won't pay unless the mining is done on a very large scale. But that isn't a government assay. Well, this is one of the finest firms in the country. I've already made arrangements with the Bureau of Mines. Their representative is going to meet us in Carson. Since it isn't going to cost us anything, what can we lose? <laughs> when this girl gets a book in her bonnet, there's no stopping it. I'm afraid it's a waste of time and effort. Sorry we can't make a deal. But uh, I'll be interested in pairing what your uh, assay shows. Enjoy your trip. We'll try to. Pop, what about that gun? All right, Marvie. You look out for things. And don't shoot yourself. Ah, oh, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Be a good boy. Goodbye, Marvie. Bye. 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 Again. Once more, please. No, 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 no. Margie, please turn with the other girl. I'm sorry, Julie. Rest a minute, girl. Hello, Ben. Hello, Hattie. Hello, Julie. My, how pretty you look. Thank you. We stopped by to pick up the money we left on deposit with you. All right. My cashier isn't here this early, but I'll get it for you. You're the bank of Gold Hill, Julie. It does look like it, doesn't it? We couldn't have a safer bank, either. Oh, you'll have a real bank soon. One hundred and thirty-seven ounces. I'll need it all. I'm going to Carson City to buy a machinery. Oh, well, then you'd better have it in yellowbacks. I'd sooner. Yeah. All right? Yep. Bank of California is good enough for me. Not day, isn't it? Sure yeah. is. Yeah. We've got a job to do. I'd better get some of the men. We'll take care of this ourselves. Not that way. We'll leave our horse at the front hitch rail. Use the spares. Correct, Julie? Goodbye, Julie. Goodbye. Hit him. This has got to look like robbery. Take whatever he's got. Hurry up!
We're in time. We haven't been missed. It's all excitement. Looks like a runaway. Cash, something terrible's happened to Hattie. Hattie, what is it? Father's been shot. We were dry gulched in the camp. Get a posse together. Who will volunteer? I don't know. Finn was carrying over seven thousand dollars. Take her inside and keep it that we bring her father in. Julie, send someone for Marvin. I'll go, Miss Julie. Thank you, thank He's, uh, been shot. Seems so. Yeah, but who? You don't think that I... Yes, you. Don't try that, either of you. Where are you from? Carson Valley. What's your name? Nevada. At all? That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. When did you get here? Just now. This ain't the first killing on this gap. It's been going on ever since the load was uncovered. Shut up. How did you come by this? That's my business, mister. How much? Seven thousand. Didn't Julie Dexter say that was the amount Ben Hyde was carrying? Yeah. Somebody get a rope. Yeah, let's string him. I've had enough from you, pal. Put up that gun. Everything looks against this kid, and he's probably guilty. But I won't stand for any funny business. If I killed a man, I wouldn't hang around waiting for somebody to come along and catch me at it. Would you? That seems to make sense, Nevada. I'll see that you get a square deal. He's Let's still killing me. Now, wait I'm a minute, boys. Him. Wait a minute. Brewer's right. It's about time we had something like law and order around this load. Thanks, Barry. Get on your horse. Bring him all the way up. Golly, I think we're here first. The heck we are. From the looks of these tracks, he's been here and gone. Oh, Carly, why didn't he wait? You tell me. If there's any trouble, I bet he'll find it. Well, if there's no trouble, he'll make it. This is what comes out of gold hunting. That made me think of a very sad song. It's about a very brave man who followed his senorita until he died. Then he turned into a pigeon with beautiful wings. La Paloma. I sing it for you. You've got to bust out singing. Why don't you warble what one little doggie said to another little doggie? What's that? Let's get along. It's Dr. Keller. Well, who is it? I've never seen him before. Yeah, well, they ought to string him up. Thank you, sir. We ought to string him up. We've got the killer, Julie. Nevada. You know him? Why, he saved me from being badly smashed up in a runaway yesterday. We found the money on him. In yellow bags? Yes. You didn't do it. What do you think? Paper money isn't common currency in this country. Where did you get it? Gambler. Can you prove it? Maybe yes, maybe no. The man I wanted from isn't likely to help me out. Who was it? I'll tell that to the marshal when I have to. You see? What brought you up here? 
You? Don't you remember? Your friend certainly gave me a hot reception. Gold Hill is going to be quite a place, you said. It sure is. You can keep it. Harry, I want you to help us. Is this the man who killed your father? You must be sure. This man's life hangs upon your answer. How can I say? Everything happened too fast. The shot sounded like there was more than one man, but I couldn't be sure. It was all I could do to keep the horses on the road. Thanks, miss. I heard those shots, too, and I'd say you were right. If and when I kill a man, it'll have to be for a better reason than money. That doesn't clear him. I'm afraid not. Circumstance is too often accepted as evidence in this country. I'll have to hold you for the territorial court. That cowpoke is pretty smart, Chief. He could talk himself right out of jail, and if he's aces with Julie... All right, go over to the Gold Hill Bar. It had not to take much to get that crowd going. Buy him plenty of drinks. Egg him on. A necktie party, huh? Yes. And if Brewer and Nelson happen to get hurt trying to stop It'd it... It'd be just too bad. Better get a move on. Here comes Julie. Hello, Miss Julie. Cash, I'd never ask anything of you, but I want something now. You've got to help that boy. Why? Oh, he's not the road agent who's been working the gap. Oh, surely you're too sensible to be taken in by his cock and bull story. Oh, we couldn't do such a thing, I'm sure of it. Well, he's fine and clean, and there's something, well, something different about him. He doesn't know fear. Well, he faced that crowd with his head high. Ah, oh, that was mere bravado. Of course, if there's something personal behind you, Wish. There is. He never would have come here except for me. I talked him into it. Oh, I'm responsible for him, don't you see? I see that you're overly sentimental. That's trash and you know it. Well, are you going to help him? If you make an issue of it. I do. Hey, hold on over there, Frank. And I can get there with you. Set him up again, Frank. He drinks for everybody. Come on, boys. This is your last chance. <coughs> say, this road agent business is a terrible thing, Joel. What do you say? Why all the talk, Pancake? Why don't we do something about it? Uh, that's just what I say. Come on, give me another drink, Frank. This fellow Brewer thinks he can run the load. Uh, yeah, he's got a swing. What does the killer call himself? Nevada. And he never give another name like that. Guess by golly, this is pretty bad. It ain't good. Here we go another time. <laughs> Hi there, Pancake. Well, hello, Dusty. Mr. Rafferty. Rafferty? Si, senor. Chino Jose Gonzalez Bustamante Rafferty. I need a drink. What's all the excitement, Pancake? Road agent. Killed 14 men and a marshal in the last month. But well, we catched him. <laughs> His name's Nevada. Where's he now? He's in the cooler. Come, let's get him out. How? Go and take him. Like my father used to say, one Rafferty can lick this whole town. Maybe. Now listen, let's don't do this the hard way. Hey, Pancake, why don't they stretch this outlaw's windpipe? Cause this load's getting too feminity, that's why. This ain't like the good old days in Hangtown. So Gold Hill don't dare hang a man. Well, I ain't never seen a miner yet with the gumption of a snail. I heard what you said. Do your ears burn? Where I come from, when we catch a road agent, we do something about it. You talk awful big, stranger. But there's a hundred dollars in it for the man that puts a rope around that killer's neck. I doubt if there's $100 on this whole dead blasted load. You got yourself a necktie party, mister. I got a brand new rope that needs stretching. Well, come on, why we wait? Let's go! Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Cash, you probably... I'll stop them. Hold on, you can't run this car with Lynch Law. I don't know why you're going to run right over you. Well, you saw. There's nothing I could do. Give me a hold on that rope, too, Perry. Break down that door. Get him out. Get him out. It's a bad crowd. They mean business. We'll do our best for you, Nevada. Taking on quite a chore. I'd protect my prisoner even if I knew he was guilty. That's my job. Here's your pistol, Nevada. Thanks.
Don't go, Mr. Brewer. There are too many of them. But Nevada... Uh, you might want to do what's right, but it just won't help. Ain't nothing more than a murdering road agent. Stick your neck in there, fella. Come on, that reward, mister. Hey, this hombre should be hung from his own horse. What do you say? Hey, hey what do you watch where you're going? Go where you're looking, senor. Julie. Take a leg. It's dark enough to get a move on. I'm not going. What? Okay. You've been robbed. I'm not going to leave here. We'll get our money back. Amigo mio, my mother always say it is better to live poor than to die rich. We ain't broke yet. I still got that hundred pound gimme for hanging you. Yeah? Well, let me see that. That's funny. Ain't it good? Why was Powell so set on getting a rope around my windpipe? Miners don't use paper money. Where'd Powell get this? I got a hunch. Another? Yes, you're both going straight down to Red Berry's place. Sure, if you say so. What? And bring Barry back here. I don't feel so good. Well, what's wrong with that? Everything. He'd shoot us on sight. I don't feel no better. No, sir, we ain't gonna do no such a dead burn thing. I promised my mother I wouldn't die with my boots on. And that's one promise I'm going to keep. I'd bet you my life. All right, then I'll work this out by myself. You mean that? Yes. Goodbye. 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 Did you ever see such an unreasonable chug here? You know you've been trouble ever since we meet up with him. He and his hunches. that lamp. I had to be sure you were alone. If I killed your father, I'd be 50 miles away by now. You can see that, can't you? I stayed here and I came here because there may be some way I can help you. Move out of the way, Hattie. I'm going to let him have it. Marvy! Marvy, I haven't got a gun. It'll be easy for you to kill me. Everybody will say you've done a very brave thing. Only when you kill a man in this country, you have a reputation to live up to. You have to keep on killing men until finally somebody kills you. Maybe it's just as well you didn't fire this old relic. She's got an awful kick. I'll bet. It'll probably hurt you as much as me. Why should you want to help us? First of all, to clear myself. Did you ever see this? The Bank of California. Why, that could be part of the money my father had. Where did your had father get it? From Julie Dexter. From Julie? She's always kept her money for us. I'm gonna see her. She couldn't have had anything to do with this. I'm gonna have a showdown with Julie Dexter. Be sure that her 
cards stay silver line be true to her and come back someday save all your kisses for someone who cares it's you she misses so answer See what it is, please. Nevada. I'll call you when I need you. Do you realize what a chance you're taking? Why, there are 50 men in there who'd kill you on sight. Why don't you call them? I know you didn't kill Ben. I've got to hide you. Girl. I've got nothing to hide, have you? I'm expecting Mr. Burge in a minute. Are you and him that thick? What are you trying to say? I'll get down to cases. And you've seen it before. I gave it to Ben Ide. Where did you get it? My partner. He got it from Powell. That gun fanner's the right-hand man of your friend Burridge. Does that begin to make sense? Cash Burridge is a very wealthy man. Why should he kill a man for a few thousand dollars? Wouldn't I like to know? He doesn't play for small stakes. Maybe the stakes ain't so small. But if Powell had anything to do with Ben's death, Cash will know how to deal with it. Oh, don't let on to Burridge. You're so wrong, Nevada. I know Cash Burge and I trust him. Too much, maybe. If I'm right and you're wrong, you're out in the same limb with the Ides. If you tip him off now, he'll be on guard. Powell's the one to work on and I can take care of him. Julie. No. Open it. Everyone's waiting for you. Good morning, Mr. Barry. What is this, Senor? Come here. Am I glad to see you two? Gracias, senor. We're the same. How about a drink? What'll it be? Poison? I take the care. Is that we broke? Where's all them yellow backs? Lacey, he took them, even ours. Just like he scanned you with them loaded dice. Loaded dice? Where's Lacey now? In the Gold Hill clink. What for? Well, they catch him trying to treat the other Julie Dexter, too. And they didn't shoot him? Oh, no, senor. Shooting is too good for such a buzzard. They had a better idea. They're giving him a necktie party tonight. I'm going to get my money back. Al, saddle three fresh Bronx. I'll need you two for witnesses. You're going to Gold Hill with me, see? Mr. Barry, we'd do anything to get even with Lacey, the slick-fingered sidewinder. Give him a drink, George. We combed the Six Mile Canyon, not a track. If Powell talks, the cum stock will blow up right in our faces. We've got to find him. How about the Eyed place? No, Nevada wouldn't dare take him there. Had he Eyed to turn him in. That buckaroo has a way with women, Cash. Showing up at the Comstock Club and facing Julie Dexter took nerve. Yes. You men watch the roads leading in and out of town. Right.
Just in case. You're not going in there unarmed. Powell's had all night to think it over. I'm going to make him talk. You ready to tell me where you got that money? We went over all that last night. And stay here till you change your mind. Look like something the cat dragged in. You look all right to me. Marvy, can't you find something to do outside? See? She wants to get rid of me so she can have you all to herself. Marvy! Ow! Ow! Oh, let's go. go! I'm going! Didn't hurt a bit. Oh, he's a great kid. He was right in that. I do want to talk to you. But I hardly know how to begin. I guess maybe I see you quite differently than I did yesterday. I don't want you to get in any more trouble because of us. I want you to go before something happens I've to got you. a score to settle first. Burridge is coming! He'll see you! Quick, in here! Hurry! All right, Marie, open the door. Good morning, Hello, Hattie. Burridge. You, uh, you heard about last night. Oh, yes. I mean, no, that is... What about last night? That road agent is still on the load. Or he was. I... I was worried about you. Oh, I'm all right. What's this? Oh, uh, Marvy fell and hurt himself. Oh, that's too bad. Where? It's my leg. Jiminy Whiskers. I think I sprained my clavicle. My clavicle. Oh... Oh. Won't you sit down, Mr. Burridge? Well, thank you. Hattie, being an old friend of your father's, I feel privileged to help you, to, to advise you. This load is no place for a young woman, alone and unprotected. I'm beginning to realize that. Of course, I, I could lend you the money to develop this property, but uh, I think you've had enough experience to realize the expense entailed in getting down to bedrock, this blue stuff. Why, well, there must be hundreds of tons of it. And it'd be a gamble whether or not you'd find gold, even if you got through it. If you still want to buy the ranch, I'll sell. You've made a very wise decision, Hattie. Be at the office in an hour, and we'll settle everything. Your uh, leg seems better, Marvy. Oh, oh, my clavicle, oh, oh. So am I, that blue stuff. What about it? That's what I want to know. Suppose you tell me. And that blue stuff is what I saw scattered along the trail in the gap. We were taking it down to Carson to have a government assay made. Marvy, get some of it, sack it up, and throw it in the buckboard. You bet. Hattie, you didn't mean what you said about selling to Burridge. I did? I won't let you. It doesn't concern you. I've had all I can stand. All I want is to get away from here. And I'm going to Mr. Brewer. He'll know what to do. He's a lawyer. He'll never reach town. Every road will be watched. Nevada, wait, please.
Let me out of here. I've had enough. Now, right, I'll tell you what you want to know. Julie. Patty, have, have you seen... Here we are. Won't be long now. Here we go another time. Take it easy. There's 12 bucks shot in this hog leg. You all right, Marty? Except I was plenty scared. But we made it, didn't we, Nevada? I thought you said Lacey was in jail. He will be in a minute. We will too. What'd you do with Powell? Wouldn't you like to know? I gave you credit for better sense than to come back here. Bro! Look here. I got first claim against this bucko. Hello, Barry. Aren't you a long way from home? What's your lean on Nevada? Nevada, may I? His name's Jim Lacey, and he robbed me of seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand? With crooked dice. If they were crooked, they were your dice, Red. Didn't you tell me? I don't speak no English, senor. Red, like Nevada said, them were your dice. Maybe you put them in the game by mistake. I'll blow you two inside out. You're not in your tavern now, Barry. You can't shoot people just because you happen to feel like it. The important thing is Nevada won 7,000 from you. Can you identify the money? It was yellowbacks on the Bank of Sacramento. That's it. You'll have to whistle for it, Barry. I don't know any law that protects a man in your position. I was cheated. These two fellas saw it. Your witnesses are as notoriously disreputable as yourself. You're right, Mr. Brewer. We're just a couple of low characters in high heels. He is right. We're a couple of heels. We lie so much we can't even trust ourselves. Wait till you two show up down below. You wait. We like it here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nevada, looks like you're in the clear about Ben Eyed. Now about Powell. Powell's been shot. Let's see you get out of this one. He isn't dead. Nevada didn't shoot Powell. I'll testify to that, and so will Hattie Eyed. Necessary, I'll go his bond at any amount. There's no reason to do that, Julie. We've no evidence to hold Nevada now. Come with me, Dr. Burton. Certainly, Julie. Keep your eye on Burridge. Hey, every rat nest has two holes. I'll watch the front. You fellas go through the alley and watch the back. See what I mean? You're pretty sharp, a small fry. Here we go another time. I believe this is the reason Ben Ide was killed. Well, why would anyone kill a man to count of that? I don't know yet. The stuff is worthless. Well, what makes you so sure? It's my business to know. All right, then what is it? Mostly lead, I should judge. Oh, I thought you knew. Well, people use lead, don't they? You, for instance. Quite a lot of it. Has anyone ever made an assay of it? Not that I know of. And it's time somebody did. In such geological strata as this, gold occurs only in quartz with occasional plaster deposits. Well, supposing it's something even more valuable than gold. You're a cowboy. You know nothing in this mining business. Nelson's a mining engineer. Can you make an assay? My equipment isn't quite set up yet. I'll pay you whatever it costs. Well, I suppose I could make a cupel furnace test. It won't be accurate, but it'll convince you I'm right. Come on over to my office. That's the answer, Doc. How do you feel? <laughs> 
So that's it. I'm checking out. Well, if it didn't hurt so well in the mind. Who shot you, Joe? Why do you want to know? Because of Nevada. You think a lot of that kid, don't you, Miss Julie? Yes, Joe. A lot. And all the time I thought it was Burridge and it's Nevada. If that ain't a hot one on Burridge. Tell you what, Miss Julie. I'll make a deal with you. You get me a great big drink. And I'll tell you what you want to know. Won't hurt him now. If I could see birds, I'd laugh right in his face. I've never seen anything act like this, except... And it isn't lead. That heat is more than 1,700 Fahrenheit. The base metals are burned off in gases or have been taken up by the lining of the crucible. You don't suppose... It's unbelievable. And yet... a final test. If this button dissolves under the action of nitric acid, it's silver. Silver. The Comstock load is a great bonanza. Not gold, but silver. It'll be mined through a great tunnel into Sun Peak. And perhaps I shall be the one to build it. What if it's just a freak occurrence? Well, it's the same stuff that's piled up all along the canyon. It must run thousands of dollars to the ton. And we are the first to know. My bank must be notified at once. I'm sending a fast rider to California. We're not the first to know. Ben Ide was killed because he was on his way to Carson to have an assay made. The man who killed him knew that was silver. Well, who is it? Who's been buying up every claim he can lay his hands on at distressed prices? Burridge. Burridge was in his office yesterday when Ide was killed. His horse was outside. Yes, but did you actually see him or Powell? Oh, you're barking up the wrong tree, Nevada. Burridge is the most trusted man on Gold Hill. The men here elected him to keep the location ledger. And he's the most dangerous man on the Comstock load. Nevada! 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 Hattie's across the street in Burridge. I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen. Hattie! You didn't sell to Burridge. I did. Perhaps all the trouble will end now. Mr. Burridge is going to Carson to have the claim recorded. We got great news. The Comstock load is a great bonanza. The greatest strike ever made. Not gold, but silver. If he gets to Carson to record your claims in his own name, nothing. But if we beat him to the gap, we can stop him. Have your horse. You 
don't care, right? I'm all right. Julie, I came to tell you that... Joe, you promised. Miss Julie ain't making any mistake loving that Nevada. He's a game kid. They may kill him, but they'll never whip him. The buried figure to get the whole load. I killed Ben Eyde for him. He wanted me to shoot Hattie, too, but you know I couldn't do that. Of course you couldn't, Joe. It was Burge that shot me. Guess he wanted to blame that on to Nevada. Hey, I... You stay here. Take care of this for me, Julie. Put it in safe. You killed Ben Ide. Powell told you? Everything. No, not everything, Julie. Joe couldn't tell you why I took such chances to control the Comstock. Perhaps you'd like to know. It was for you, Julie. I wanted to put the Comstock and all her hidden millions in your lap. Everything I did was for you. I believe you. And I blame myself. I kept silent about the silver when everything within me made me want to tell those men the truth. Julie, I love you. I loved you once. But it isn't too late even yet. We can still... Let me through, Julie. No. lives of what you believe to be right. Stay in a battle. Promise me. I promise you. Open the window. stands a beacon for a great migration. Sun Peak, the glory of the Washoes, another star for our flag. Nevada. <laughs> 